So the scientific evidence, in this case dietary studies, should be analyzed closely. The definition of low-carb diet that they use is not standardized. And again, according to other people that look at this, and according to all of us, if 40% of your calories from carbs is not a low-carb diet. There are multiple factors associated that could cause hard recalcification in the low carb diet group. And that is exactly my goal. And that's what I see time and time again, when my patients come in, they come in, they're heavier. A lot of them have already gone through this. They've already gone low carb. They've already started doing a, an intermittent fasting program and they are starting to lose weight. Their triglyceride or HDL is dropping significantly. Their hemoglobin A1C is dropping. All of these signs indicating that they're getting better and they're decreasing their insulin resistance and they're decreasing their cardiovascular inflammation. Their inflammation panel is improving. And guess what? I have to talk so many patients out of this issue because then they say, you know what? I came to you because I had a calcium score. I'm gonna go get another one because I expect it to drop. And I keep saying, be careful, it's likely to go up. And we'll talk about the reason why in just a minute. The results of the study could have been explained by the healthy user bias. In other words, folks that were on the low carb diet were folks that had had cardiovascular risk in the beginning to start with, and they knew it. That's why they went on a low carb diet. And guess what? They got increased calcium score. And unfortunately, these authors presented that as they increased their cardiovascular risk. And I see that happen all the time. What they don't understand is that last bullet, stabilized plaque is calcified unstabilized or soft plaque is not stable. So let's go a little bit deeper into this. I've presented this information in other presentations in the past. Is calcified plaque really more stable? The Honda study, Journal of the American College of Cardiology, 2004. We've known this for decades now. So what did they do? Well, they took these images of plaques, soft plaque, and you can see this is a plaque and there's very little calcium in this plaque. They took a comparative image of another plaque and you can see these white flecks in the plaque. Those white flecks, by the way, are calcification. So for those of you who have not seen calcification in plaque, this is what it looks like. And so guess what? What they were saying in the study is people that came in on a low carb diet and stayed on a low carb diet for years progressed to this. And they're saying that means they increase their risk for cardiovascular disease. Now that's where the biggest concern that I have with this study and the interpretation of the study, and that is interpretation of calcium score. Now, for those of you who would say, well, looking at calcium and IMT is subjective. No, it's not. I mean, you can see the image here and guess what? In the Honda study, what they did was they did some digitization and some digital quantification of these numbers. And again, you can see very clearly much more calcium in this plaque. The technology used was very different. On IMTs, you're using ultrasound and on calcium score, you're using CT. It's coronary calcium computerized tomography, which we mentioned in the beginning of the study presentation earlier. But both of them do the same thing. You can use this digitization method with either one of them to say, okay, just how much calcium is there in that artery wall? Here's the thing that I keep going, why don't people understand this? Doctors, even medical researchers, I know why patients don't understand it. It's because you see the science like we talked about in this article today. This is an event. It's called a Kaplan-Meier curve. A Kaplan-Meier was developed for insurance companies to look at death rates. And these are not death rates, these are event rates. So every time somebody has an event, the line drops. Now, you've got two different groups. You've got, what, 112 people in one group and 103 in the other. One group had calcified plaque, this group. The other group had the soft plaque, the non-calcified plaque. This is the group with the soft plaque, the non-calcified plaque. So guess what? They are obviously having a lot of events. And then this image is one of the most helpful images to help people understand why I'm saying once we get started, our goal is to calcify that plaque. 
We've gone through a, a whole lot of information. We've gone through a study today, which is being used to show that low carb diets cause cardiovascular risk. As with any study, there are problems with it. To me, the biggest problem is not so much misinterpretation of what's low carb. I think that's a problem for sure. But I think the biggest problem is these people were actually stabilizing their plaque. You had a selection bias. You selected for people that had prediabetes and plaque and soft plaque. And that group said, I know I've got a problem. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to go on a low carb diet to see if I can manage this. And sure enough, they started counseling their plaque. And instead of increasing their risk, they actually decreased their risk, as we saw in the Honda study. Unfortunately, the authors have obviously never seen the Honda study, and they've not spent any time doing things like IMT.